Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to renovate an ancient city, and this is part one of the tutorial. So without further ado, let's investigate how to go about this. Before doing anything to your city, there are a few things you need to take in mind. For one, is this the specific one you want? If you have low structure variety, then perhaps not. If there's a giant aquifer in the way, maybe find another. So make sure that it's a decently generated one. This one, although it does not have any campsites, in that case, just repair the campsite. Can't really give many details on that. Well, this one's special because it has a bathhouse, and this is a abnormally rare structure. But if you have it, then definitely consider the one you're in. Next up, you want to remove all the skulk components, especially the skulk itself. However, if you're doing this in creative mode, I mean this is a harder tutorial, then you should probably just use fill commands to get rid of the sensors, then get rid of the shriekers, get rid of the catalyst, and get rid of the veins. Then the actual blocks themselves will be manually reviewed, because of course, you can see some of them are deep sight, some of them are other blocks in the build, essentially, a catch-all fill command would not be very useful in this. So you'd have to go in and manually replace it or make your fill commands on a case-by-case -case basis. Essentially, remove the water, remove the lava, remove the dangerous skulk components, and fill in any holes in the ground, along with taking any ores out of the walls if you're in survival. Using some commands, I have now cleaned up a lot of the area. And you can see this initial layer down here has very little skulk minus this area that I missed. And now this place should be nice and secure. Many wardens later although, but still. And now what you want to do is go to the middle and you're going to determine what exactly you want to do with this place. First off, it's ginormous. We don't need every single part. So we're going to have to chop a few off in order to make it bearable. Otherwise I'd be here forever. So what you want to do is, if something goes to a dead end like this, then start destroying it. Maybe turn it into a different kind of area, or something else. And then, when you find a structure that's made out of dark oak, also get rid of it. Pretty much anything that was implied to have been built by the illagers, yeah that's actually the real ore implication due to the wool colors in dark oak, well you want to get rid of it. It's stylistically clashing, and it'll probably only create issues. And you can see how this is a dead end that goes nowhere. You can use this for your own structures. So I recommend chopping this entire branch off. So go in, if it doesn't lead anywhere, probably get rid of it. And then in the middle, you want to determine what to do with this area right here. And personally, I think filling it with either lava or some soul fire would be interesting. Don't forget about these kinds of towers over here. Normally they have skulk sensors in it, but I had to get rid of it. Oh, Shrieker here. But still, you might want to incorporate some of that again. Make sure you incorporate what you already see in the city into your own build, which means the palette and such, the candles, things like that. Along with that, make sure you flatten this area here. Just make it one continuous slab of tiles. Since the middle is a little bit of a mess right now, even with some of the changes down here, removing pieces of dark oak, I recommend going back to the entrance and smoothing it out. Of course, it's not 100% done, but by making it one layer, although that does involve rebuilding a lot of it, it makes it a lot nicer of an entrance, even if it becomes a little monotonous alone. That's why these little pockets here, they also need to be changed. But of course, that's going to come at a later point. For now, what you want to do is start fixing up the pillars. You can see that a lot of them are reduced to rubble. Of course, there's one or two that still stand, even with significant damages. So what you want to do is go in and start repairing them. Right here, I changed up a few of the blocks and made it go all the way to the ceiling. You want to do something like this. And don't forget, although you're removing the skulk, that doesn't mean you can't use it as a decoration. Right here, I'm going to put some of it in, and now it's an interesting decoration. Of course, the whole place is very dark because of course we're in the deep dark, which is a pretty significant issue for visibility, but otherwise, 
it's not an issue because monsters can't even spawn in this biome or structure. So for now, start repairing your pillars and if you really want to, you can see how they overlap with the edge of this polished basalt area. If you have the time and patience to do so, perhaps move them one block inward so that way they have a little bit more ground to stand on and these pockets can just be a little bit prettier once we start adding things like skulk. With this central area's walkway mostly finished, it's now time to go to the flanking sides. And you can see, well, I have my pillars here, but this one's the odd one out, and it has a bit more fire in it. I recommend adding the fire to this, because otherwise it ends up too dark. I mean, it is the deep dark, but I think this is a little excessive. Yeah, you can see the issue. While it's inevitably going to be a very dark build, still, adding the extra fire can really help, so make sure that you have ample lighting. For the one area where there's originally some polished basalt, I instead turned it into a little skulk pit and then added redstone lamps around it. No actual skulk components here though because for one, a lot of skulk catalyst will be used in the build so I'm gonna be honest, I recommend building a warden farm if you want to use those. And two, well, this area just needs some light. You need to add a bunch of light everywhere, so whenever you have something like this, just a little bit of skulk lying around, add some light near it. Pretty much anywhere you can, try fixing the light issue. Because while it's not able to be 100% fixed without killing the entire build, still, it's a start. Now, with the place mirrored and all the skulk areas added, you can see how there's a bunch of lamps around. And now, we have a proper build up to the middle. And yes, it's very dark, but this is to give an idea of how much the lighting changes it. Does it disrupt the mood? Yes. Is it necessary though? For the most part, also yes. So turning back on the night vision, so that way mobile users can actually see. Well, back to the middle. And I kind of abandoned this for a moment because the entrance is pretty important to getting that motivation to build. Once you see what you can do with the build, it makes doing the buildings themselves a lot easier. Which it can be pretty tough to do because... Well, there's so many duplicates. Now for the middle, what I recommend doing is, first off, get rid of this piston door. Just take out all the redstone and empty this room completely. Get rid of all the topography. Pretty much, this is going to be your storage room. You want to make this as simple as possible for yourself. And then, what you want to do is create an entrance into that room here. Instead of a piston door here, you take some stairs in order to get into the room. Now, we can actually get rid of this downward area, but first, make sure that your wall's designs are, well, good. Of course, these parts are unfinished, but something like this, this is actually just a repaired version of what the normal ancient city would look like. So all you need to do is just copy this, and go through, place some wool in, and the wool's optional, you might want to change it for a different block. But you want to go in and do little things like that. Maybe add some tiles around. The gray wool, maybe just flatten it out instead of having it have little wool teeth. I just don't think that looks very good. And for that matter, you might be able to just go ahead and remove the entire wool layer on this thing. Since it's really only there to make sure a shrieker doesn't go off if you're inside that piston room. And for reference, it doesn't always save you. I've had uh, close calls before. But essentially, Add some tiles, make sure your designs are completed on all sides, plug up these doorways around here. Well, once all your designs are completed, what you want to do is cut it up into five block areas, something like this. And not all parts will work because it evens, so adjust it as necessary. But what you want to do is have some areas have fire and then other ones in the middle will have these little towers rise up and these will always have their lamps glowing using some redstone. So that way it's all nicely lit up and you even get to use some of the original design of the ancient city. With the insides mostly empty, the walls still might be a little bit too thick for now, and the designs, or at least on the outer layer, consistent, it's now time for this pit. And I said to segment it, however there's an issue. It's uh, six blocks wide. It, that's not very good for segmentation. However, using the roughly same idea, you can start adding these lamp posts to it. 
In order to get this weird stair shape, here's what you do. And I actually didn't know this for years. So what you do, instead of trying to do this and now you have that weird side, instead, you place one like this, another one like that, and then go back and forth, and what do you know? You can build another. And this works upside down from any orientation. And now what you want to do is add lighting. Of course, you don't want to make it too bright, so I chose weathered copper bulbs, not completely oxidized, but enough that they're not bright. And then what you want to do is copy these around. You see these wool pieces here with the tiles behind them? Well, you want to copy them in front of it. And then you can fill up the entire rest of the area with soul fire in order to provide that rest of the effect. If your device is underpowered though, you might want to pass on the soul fire and maybe go for something more simple like lava, even if that's harder to do. Otherwise, continue on, making sure everything is consistent, add the lightings, make sure that there's no random errors, and then we can finally move on to the actual statue itself. Which I've already made a tutorial on, but by this point, considering I straight up opened the video with hello fellow minecrafters, I don't think that video is very useful anymore, so I'll provide a quick guide on how to do that. With those pillars now in place, and some of the final details being wrapped up around here, so now it's mostly consistent, I still have some issues from time to time. Now it's time to move on to the main structure, and also don't forget to put down some more of these lamps. Move them if you need to. Anyways, turning back on night vision, this structure is a mess. You can see it's all ruined, it's covered in skulk. Yeah, and the top is not the best. So hopefully there are not any shriekers left on this because who knows, there could be one hidden right here and that would be pretty unlucky. But what you want to do is start off by changing all the blocks into some nice deep slate bricks. Everything here, except the reinforced deep site, just turn it into bricks for now. Leave the ears or eyes or whatever as is. And then, here's a little picture of, well, not picture, it's just in-game, of what I've done to one of the original monuments. Fill load. You can see how I've turned it all into bricks, added some tough around here. Don't be overwhelmed by this, I mean, look, this is definitely meant to be a standalone structure in its own right but pay attention to what I do. For the reinforced deep slate, of course I have it be polished tough because of course you can't move the stuff, but I add some deep slate bricks and then I put some tiles behind it and then put some stairs. So that way I have these cool designs. And then to actually hold the reinforced deep slate, I use some cobbled deep slate and some chains inside. And preferably you'd sort out some of the lighting issues too. Have those chains, if you want to do those, hook inside, and then have some lighting blocks. Maybe shroom lights or glowstones, sea lanterns, whatever is cheapest for you. So that way, the portal frame actually glows from afar, since it is the centerpiece of the ancient city. Once you have all your deep slate bricks now in place, you should start outlining it in polished deep slate around the corners, something like this and you'll probably start adding those teeth I had the walls on the outside, rewind if you need to, but you're gonna notice something incredibly disappointing about this structure. Not only is the reinforced deep site not movable, and I understand why, but the structure happens to be 22 blocks wide. It is not centered at all. Yeah, quite unfortunate. The structure is not centered, which means you're going to have to make your own modifications to make it work. Of course, the unevenness that you typically see in game hides that fact, but now that we have a nice pristine city that's getting cleaned up, we're gonna have to try really hard to make up for that fact. But what you want to do is move those ears a little bit lower. You can see I just copy pasted that ear onto this, the ear from earlier, and uh, it does not line up, so you're gonna have to lower it a little. And for the other side, well, just make it symmetrical. And then from here, you just rewind back and forth to see what I do. Don't copy the patterns exactly. You're just gonna get a headache doing that. I recommend making your own stair patterns. And with due time, you'll be able to make this build work. Although there isn't the room for chains, well, you can still hide lighting in other ways, such as copper grates with lighting blocks below, 
carpets, and other small discrete blocks or transparent blocks. While you're trying to fill this in, especially with the off-centeredness, you might think about workarounds. I mean, of course, if you're in creative mode, you can just edit it and just add more reinforced to deep slate. However, for survival mode, there's something else you can do. Instead of having the whole frame, just cover it up. If you hide it like this, then you go around the problem entirely. While you don't get to see the cool texture, though, it's centered again. While this part does need to be pushed one block, because of course this little footprint here touching the tiles is five blocks, while on this side it's six, so it does actually solve your problem. Although it's a little bit cheaty, still it's perfectly doable in survival mode, as long as you're okay with sacrificing that reinforced to deep sight texture. However, I recommend doing this with tiles instead of bricks in order to add a little bit of contrast. With some more work done, now I have a little bit of a menacing scene right here with a piece of the repaired city, although it's uh, really dark. And while that adds to the effect, that's not exactly good for viewing. So here, you can see that I carved in all these designs. I don't recommend copying these exactly because that would be tedious. Instead, just play around with stairs and slabs and then mirror it. Don't forget that chiseled deep slate also exists. And then I have these teeth going on in order to add to the effect, making sure to hide the reinforced deep slate because of course it's off center. It turns out no matter how good you are at symmetry, it only exemplifies the problem ironically. Also to add extra lighting, I put in some weathered copper bulbs. And then what you want to do from here is repair anything here. For the cracked stuff, I'm going to do that at the end. I mean, look, I have an entire city ahead of me. Yeah, it's not very important to do the texturing yet. But essentially, you should be filling this up with little decorations, maybe statues and such. And also, these little columns here, I redesigned. Pause if you want to take a good look, but there is something important. The one on the corners are taller by one block, and also, they now use calibrated skulk sensors. The reason being for this is, well, they have higher range. And to respond to this, I replaced the wool here with tiles. So now when you walk by, it lights up. And when it does that, it just looks cool. Now, fix up all the varying inconsistencies with what blocks being used on this foundation, add a few extra decorations, and make sure you have a staircase to get back up here, even if you're not going to use it for anything. And then, we can start working on the storage. I just added black concrete there for a cool screenshot. But anyways, what you want to do here is align the walls with chests. If you want to have a more advanced storage room, what you do is you place to block your sorting into the chest behind it. However, because I'm not going through and making a complete storage room for 30 seconds of footage on a tutorial not about that, I am just going to put bamboo mosaic. Don't forget item frames also exist too. Now, I've continued building the rest of this, and you'll notice it's a little bit of a jump cut, mainly because so much happened, it would be really hard to collect in one clip. So, I'm just going to cover the major points, and I recommend pausing to view the rest in case your build differs. On the outside, you can see how I finished this exterior wall using some skulk. I'm now going to have a pathway that wraps around this whole place. It will be three blocks wide, and there should be a way to get from the middle down, preferably by staircase or ladder, in order to get to this universal walkway. And then, as you're doing this, you might find that a structure overlaps. If it's a common structure like this weird barracks one, then I recommend outright removing it if you don't mind. So, I'm going to have the pathway, cut out this building, mainly because I like this building and want to use it for alchemy. And then, going back around, you can see how I have these little pillars, the calibrated skulk sensors are in here, but their increased range might create issues for the inside, so you might want to change them back. So, with that out of the way, then I added some extra things to decorate right here, just some magma and then one of those weird structures you see all around that's meant to resemble the middle. I put the dragon egg here under a normal fire since it contrasts a lot, and then on the inside, I started making a normal base for storage. Of course, don't forget your lighting. It can be a little bit darker because, of course, 
you don't have to contend with mobs down here, but still, don't forget your torches and lanterns. And then in this end, I made a villager trading hall. It looks a bit different, I made my own tutorial on how to do it, and the quartz are just simple placeholders. If you want to figure out how to do it with my design, which massively increases the XP yield, then I recommend looking in the top right corner. Anyways, make sure that you have the rest of the details you want to incorporate, making sure to decorate tables and not leave giant empty areas. Don't forget about making your carpets two layered like this, and then decorating your bookshelves with looms. With all that, now it's time to go to the outer areas, and there's a little bit of a problem. So you know how the middle was off center and then these inner walls were off center, the outer walls are also off center so I had to fix everything. Well guess what else is off center? That's right, every single walkway is also off center. And this one was off center by one block unfortunately. So it's up to you, do you want to tear down the whole thing and start from scratch? Or do you just want to leave them as is and upgrade them from there? Considering I'm in creative mode and also have very limited world edit, I'm going to move them instead. Although, sometimes it's better to demolish them. Essentially, since there's no threat of wardens anymore, or at least hopefully, well, you don't need to have wool anymore. You can do all tiles or all spruce planks, it's up to you. You could even make this front area spruce planks if you wanted to, although that could detract from the vibe of the build. But who knows, perhaps it's for the better. Anyways, make sure those walkways are ready to be refurbished and you have an idea in mind. And don't forget about these little whoop-de-whoops here. With this outer wall now completed, with a walkway going around, and some ways to get there, you can see how I cut out this part, make it go into here, remove a little bit of storage so that way you can access it from there, and removing one of the villager slots so you can access it through here. Well, the accessibility is there. Now, what we need to do is, of course, remove a lot of the walkways. Because they're quite off-center to the rest of the build, and if you have the time to do it, I highly recommend just removing them. These ones, you can see, sure, they look nice, but they're pretty generic, and we can probably make better versions of them. And then over here, you can see there's a little bit of dark oak from pillager interaction, but at the same time, it's just not interesting, and not to mention, I already said to remove all the dark oak. So, that doesn't work either. And then, if you need some more structures to it, feel free to add more. You can use slash place commands or structure blocks. Since I know ice boxes are a rare but encounterable structure, I made sure to place one here. And I'm going to make sure that I have a way to make it better. And then something like this. Although it's not an important structure, I like it. So I'm going to find a way to convert a four, -way, a four wide walkway to this five wide, well actually it's larger than that, but still. Making sure to preserve this structure in the process and relocate the nether portal to it. Essentially, you should look at each structure and determine if it has a valid usage. You can see these ones that are like hugging really close to the central, that only have one chest. Well, all I need to do is repair the walls and add a few pillars and now I have a very small room. I'd recommend using those for enchanting or a library. However, the ice box also has a basement, which might be good for this as well. So you have to think about which structure works best for your scenario. In this case, I'm going to relegate it to one of these smaller ones and figure out something to do with the ice box. And now, you'll have these large open areas once we remove some of the bridges. Well, you can add your own to make sure that they actually line up. They can be even or odd blocked. And you should change them depending on what structure they're connecting to. You can see this is 4 to 6 wide, though I should make mine an even number, while behind here it should be an odd number since it's an odd number of blocks. For those smaller structures, I have made two different variants. This one chops down all but one wall and then redesigns the remaining wall. You can see how I have two thick pillars of deep sight bricks that go up and then have some tiles in between. And this is a really nice pattern, even if you're not building this. Still, I highly recommend trying to incorporate this into your builds, even if it uses a different palette, since it's a very good way to make flatter walls and not have to excessively detail them, but still make them look really good. And then down here for the foundation, I use a lot of skulk. If you have the resources to do so, 
you can use Gold Catalyst, and I tried toning down on a lot of them. And I actually haven't used any yet, but still, if you can, I recommend using them for lighting. Speaking of which, there's a little bit of a problem with this build. It's still too dark. While this area is working, because well I have the lamps, and then I have the magma, the fires, etc. So when I turn off the night vision, yeah, it's really dark, but it's in a good way, because you can still see what you're doing. But then when you're on this lower walkway, it's light level zero the whole time. So I highly recommend incorporating some candles into it in order to make it work. And if you have the resources to do so, you might want to replace the bottom block of these skulk blocks with the catalyst variation. However, that is incredibly expensive and might not look as good, so I'm not going to strongly recommend it. Either way, what you want to do is line this area with candles, hopefully you have a bee farm, and then going around, remove structures that you're not going to touch at all. I, us I used to have three of those little structures, and here's the second one. I used some pillars and then some little iron bars with soul fire and then some skulk behind them. And sure, this is a nice structure. I recommend pausing to see how I've really built it. You know, the pillars, the barrels for a lapis, and then your grindstone, an actual enchanting table. But the thing is, there's so many of them, and you don't have to keep all of them. Remember, once you remove a bunch of the structures, you can see how open it is. So if you need something, you can build it and not have to worry about space constraints. Either way, go on and light the place up and then you want to focus on this tower structure and repair it. I just copy pasted the repaired version that generates in game onto this. And what you want to do is use some stairs in order to make this angle sharper. And then make sure there's no skulk on it, repair the platforms. And then what you want to do is make this an alchemy structure most likely. Since you can see there's a lot of area but it's really cut up. So what you need to do is think about what you can fit, and that's why I say alchemy. Brewing stands don't take that much space. Now, these pillars have been redesigned. You can see that I included some stairs, some storage up here with an ender chest. I forgot one on the other version over there. But anyways, this one's the alchemy one, and you can see some nether wart is growing, and on top of the brewing stands, we're actually below, brown wool tables made of deep slate. And under them, they have waterlogged stairs, so that way you never run out of water or have to make weird trips to get more. And then I left the bottom layer mostly the same with a few minor changes. Then I changed all the lanterns to normal lanterns and added some extra to make sure it was bright. And pause if you want to take a closer look. I recommend redesigning it depending on what you know what to do. However, I strongly recommend taking heavy inspiration. So that's one variation you can do. This one is for looms and such. Of course, some of my own logo here, but anyways, it's a little bit simpler, a nice barrel in order to store your banner patterns, and then some storage up here. Don't forget an ender chest, because it's really easy to end up really far from an ender chest. I mean, look at this. This is actually just a mega base. If you have to go from here all the way to here for an ender chest, that's kind of inconvenient, so you should try to place more around to minimize that. Same thing with crafting tables, although I'm probably not going to do that anyways. And now, it's time to move on to this structure. I recommend making this into a proper doorway, taking inspiration from this weird structure that I demonstrated earlier. And then, for the inside, stuff it with whatever you need, whether it be a bedroom or a sugarcane farm, whatnot. There's not really too much to say besides pretty up the walls a little using the inspiration that you've already built. For another refurbishment, you can see that I've started using some amethyst. Generally, I don't recommend using amethyst too much, but if you're running out of blocks and you're tired of skulk, it's fine to use, especially with that lore implication that echo shards may just be amethyst covered in skulk and something else. And now, this is a bedroom. You can see I continued using that exterior wall design, and on the outside, I did it again. I made a small change with the stairs, and then don't forget to line stairs across your walkways. It makes them a lot more interesting than flat. I also did this over there at the entrance, but it's not super important to look at. And now, I repaired those tiny columns, added some soul fire, and what do you know, a bedroom. Don't forget to line the walls with decorations, candles, decorated pots, 
flowers, although I forgot to fill these flower pots, still the idea is there. And then for another one I did, I made a challenge. I'm only going to be using deep slate for this one. And you can see how literally using just deep slate bricks and some deep slate tiles under it, I've made this very nice castle wall design. I used some skulk here, but otherwise, yeah, it's almost completely deep slate. And of course, that little stair trick to make them seem a little bit taller, used some stairs to make them more carved and interesting, and what do you know, I have a little area for a sniffer farm. So just think about what you can fit. Here's a quick look at the inside, and of course, I've lined it with lanterns to make sure that the visibility is okay. If you put minecarts under this, you have a mildly inefficient sniffer farm, but it is fully automatic, so it doesn't really matter too much. And now, it's time to move on to some of the other structures, but most importantly, this barrack structure. If you have these around, yeah, you're definitely going to have to deal with them. And they're very common too, so you're going to have to really think about what you're going to do. Personally, I'd recommend removing them, even if they're pretty thick and hard to remove. So they're really hard to work with. They have an entrance at the bottom, which although it could be moved, it's a little finicky. And right here, I have this little area I can walk across, but at the same time, this is really more suited for a surprise warden encounter than an actual build. Luckily, there are still these pillars here, so potentially extending them down would work, and there are some little teeth here for a castle-like design. I'm going to be converting this one into a blacksmith and filling this area here with lava but it's completely fine if you want to remove a few. And then, you'll be mostly done. Of course, you still have the walkways, which are going to vary a lot depending on how your city looks. And then you're gonna have to remove a couple extraneous structures. You'll notice that this city is actually quite barren because I removed a bunch of those small one chests and a few of these style structures. But otherwise, a lot of the structures are going to remain and they also need their revamps. This one, of course, is actually relatively common, so I'm going to cover it in more detail. If you have two similar structures connected like this, then chop down the wall between them and see what it can do. I'm going to turn this into a generic animal pen though. But still, think about what you can do with close together structures. And remember, if something doesn't fit, feel free to remove it. Since the more area you have left behind, then the more area you can fill up with little things like benches and more pillars, like this one, if I repair it. For this blacksmith here, I used my normal segmentation with that cool skulk background that can be substituted for tiles, incorporated lava, blackstone, and banners, and then continued that all around while making sure to add some stairs to mix it up a little. Make sure it has good lighting around. If you don't have good lighting, you're going to run into issues because while this is a moody build it's still a little dark and these empty areas don't worry they're mostly just bridges or duplicate structures so no big worries here we're going to be filling this up with whatever you need and then some areas are blank because of course not all these buildings are going to be serviceable for what you need anyways try incorporating the pillars that normally generate typically only this one and this one generate but I modified them and then promptly made more of them. And then for this area here, I changed the altar to not be an altar while that one gets a silence trim armor stand. And now it's a walkway with anvils. Don't put anvils in front of lava, that's how you get the anvils to break and eject your items straight in. Not a good time. And now this specific barracks is done. And now for another thing you can do with them. Going to the other side of the city, this one became a sugarcane farm, and what I did is I excavated the foundation out in order to turn this little nook here into a balcony instead. And then I promptly used my sugarcane farm design, and what do you know, I have a nice area with some big entrances with the stairs, and then some extra pillars with soul fire on them. Of course, take a pause if you want to look at the exact details of it, nothing super new to this. And now, it's time for wrapping up our major structures. I removed all the ruins because they didn't add much and were really just scattered blocks rather than destroyed buildings. And now, our final structures. This one right here with the walls, typically you'll see a more ruined version of this, however it's definitely repairable. And I'm gonna be honest, there aren't many uses for this. 
While it does make a good living space because you can definitely add glass or iron bars in order to create windows, still, it's kind of niche of a structure. It's fine if you don't do anything with it, but I don't recommend removing it simply because it has a unique shape that can be hard to build otherwise. And then, for the other unique structures, well, we have this one. Honestly, I just say leave it as is. This is probably one of the best parts of the ancient city despite it serving very little purpose. If you have any of these little things dotting around, you can remove them or straight up convert them into decorative structures. These pillars here, well, just do the same treatment you gave to the big pillars at the front, and then the ice box. Turns out the sing's entrance is off center. Recenter the entrance, and then you can turn this frozen area into a little basement. Not entirely sure what you'd use it for, but give it a shot. And then all the way over here, of course, you have your altars. Personally, I just make sure they're actually facing the areas you're going to be walking on, lighting the candles and just leaving it be. I mean, it doesn't serve much of a purpose. It's not like worshiping whatever that is is going to help, especially since you kind of redesigned the entire thing. And then you have your sauna. The sauna is the rarest structure in the entire ancient city. And I'd say repair it and then leave it as is. Maybe add a few extra decorations by looking up pictures of real saunas, adding the triangle things you see all around. I mean, this building right here is how I got the inspiration. And otherwise, weaving it as is. It's a really nice set piece, and it's a shame that it's so rare. I searched through like five different ancient cities and didn't find any until I came back here, searched it again, and realized I missed it. That's why this tutorial didn't come sooner, actually, but still. Yeah. You just want to give the same treatment to the structures I haven't covered completely and turn them into legitimate structures. And then we can start working on the walkways, the extra decor, and making sure this thing's an actually good structure rather than, hey look, I have random deep slate things lying around. Right here for the structures, you can see that this one with the roof, well, I kind of just took off the roof, added some pillars, and then made it a little cozy area. It serves zero purpose, but still, sometimes it's nice to just have a little aesthetic building here and there. And then, I have a panic room, you know, somewhere you can go AFK without worrying about the incredibly improbable chance of somehow, somewhere, a zombie just coming in and killing you. You know, we all have the anxiety. And now, for this, the two structures next to each other, I merged them into one, and I made them into an animal farm. And you'll notice, I've done literally nothing new with the design, I just added some torches, and I forgot to finish this part right here, but otherwise, yeah, I just added some torches, made a few small changes here and there in order to make it, well, a building, and what do you know, it's complete. As for the other buildings, well, I've actually run out of time. I was planning to do this entire ancient city in one video, and as you can see, well, I'm recording this very shortly before Wednesday, so this is uh, not a good time, so I have to cut it short here. It's already a very long video, so I hope you enjoy it, but still, here's what you already have of the city. I did not finish the ice box and sauna yet, though. So, real quick, just a quick tour of what you have. You already have this entrance, a few minor adjustments made here and there, and then added some stairs to mix it up. Some lighting and skulk patches with some stairs inside them. And then you have this middle, which has a bunch of skulk sensors to make these interesting lights, along with a huge soul fire pit, and on the inside, a complete living space, which has yourself villagers and storage. And then going around some more, well, that area is unfinished, but the smaller structures have gotten their own revamps. Remember, they're underground, you don't need a roof on everything because there's not exactly rain. And, just so you know, you can fit anything you want down here, as long as you have the space. So, I put whatever. I have sniffers, I have cartography, whatnot. And yeah, it's slowly getting done. And once you have all the buildings in, it's a matter of connecting them together and seeing what else you can add to this. The next part of this video is going to focus on the walkways, because although your initial instinct would just be copy this, well, there's a lot more you can do. Little benches, extraneous walls like here, you could make an interesting wall that's kind of like the existing walls you put on things like this. Think about it like that. You can add a bunch of it. Fortunately, 
next week the other half of this video will come so you'll be able to finish this in due time and considering how large it is i doubt you'll have a wait between them because by the time you finish the first half the second half should be released and with that it's the end of today's video if you enjoyed this video remember please like and subscribe it really helps me out either way enjoy the rest of your day gearsaw out